Why do we relate so much with film? Why, when we watch the struggles of relationships on screen, do we relate so much with the problems of complete strangers? In many ways, film captures the elite, both in appearance and performance, as they undergo the same experiences as us common folk watching. Evolutionary psychology attempts to answer many of these questions about why we act the way we do. Film organically captures what it means to be human. It displays the instincts, mistakes, and triumphs of human interactions. Through a medium that shows us who we are, we can also, through evolutionary psychology, understand why we do the things we do. As we all know, aesthetics are vital in Hollywood. Many of your favorite actors have symmetrical faces, large eyes, small noses, and big lips. Female actors are thin yet curvaceous, while male actors are muscular and tall. All of these traits in which we find attractive stem from the survival instincts humans still carry that can be explained by evolutionary psychology. Psychology Today defines evolutionary psychology as the study of the ways in which the mind was shaped by pressures to survive and reproduce. Topics within evolutionary psychology include a plethora of human behaviors, such as jealousy and competition and attraction. Evolution occurs over many generations and is not a conscious decision made by individuals, but rather trends that reward nature's fittest individuals for survival. Film has always acted as a mirror to society. One of the leading researchers in evolutionary psychology, cognitive psychology, and dynamical systems theory, Douglas T. Kenrick, says of film, Just as Ben and Jerry's exploits our ancestral cravings for sugar and fat, Hollywood has exploited our ancestral cravings for attractive mates, trustworthy friends, social status, and safety from the nasty guys who want to take what we have and burn down our village. Former professor of biopsychology at Bemidji State University and author of Why Parents Matter, The Science of Romance, Nigel Barber goes in depth on the sexual selection of partners. Barber writes, men's physical appearance tends to communicate social dominance, which has the combined effects of intimidating reproductive rivals and attracting mates. In addition to their attractiveness and intimidatory effects, human secondary sexual characters also provide cues to hormonal status and phenotypical quality consistent with the good gene model of sexual selection, which includes parasite resistance. As for women, Barber claims women compete with each other for high-quality husbands by advertising reproductive value in terms of the distribution of fat reserves and by exaggerating morphological indicators of youthfulness, such as a small nose and small feet and pale, hairless skin. Thus, of course, the muscular, strong, and attractive Superman in Man of Steel ultimately gets the beautiful and fit Lois Lane, whose skin is fair and relatively hairless. Superman has a strong and distinct jawline that is undeniably attractive. According to evolutionary psychology, strong jawlines are indicative of high testosterone levels. Thus, the higher the testosterone levels, the higher the chances for a man to have more offspring. Additionally, Superman is quite tall, with height being an indicator of better health. Women in the past who chose a tall mate with a strong jawline whether a conscious or subconscious decision, were evolutionarily rewarded with many offspring to pass on their genes and preferences. As for Lois, her face is quite symmetrical. Facial symmetry develops while dealing with environmental conditions. Therefore, according to researchers Little, Jones, and DeBrun, the ability of an individual to develop successfully in the face of environmental pressures is therefore one proposed indicator of genetic quality. Lois is young, slim, has long legs and a full chest. All traits that indicate she is fertile. All evolutionarily advantageous traits. Stereotypes in American culture say that women are nurturers. They, for the most part, protect children and have an innate desire to have them. Evolution has slowly, through many generations, rewarded women who are nurturing and choosy about partners. Gary Permerswanen, Professor at State University of New York at New Paltz states that when evolutionary psychologists claim that women are choosy about the men they have sex with and long-term relationships are geared toward choosing loyal men who will stay with them and help them raise their children, they express these early ideas from early social science.
Ripley from the Alien films is most definitely one of the most beloved female characters in cinematic history. Ripley is a powerful leader who defends her ship and crew at all costs. In the second Alien film, Aliens, Ripley risks her life to save a young child from becoming a victim to the alien. In evolutionary psychology, everything revolves around survival and reproduction. Additionally, women are the ones who have children, and most often in nature, female animals are the ones who raise and nurture their young. Furthermore, according to researchers in the field, males are selective about finding the most fertile women, while women try and find men who are willing and able to support a woman and child. However, reducing such a feminist character's motivations to reproductive instincts seems irresponsible. Ripley is so much more than a woman who is trying to attract men with her fertile traits. She is an intelligent scientist and crew member who has the tactical ability to be the only crew member in a crew of mainly men to survive in the first film. This is where evolutionary psychology starts to garner a lot of criticism from feminists. While humans have progressed so much in their thousands of years of existence, evolutionary psychology still grounds humans in our primitive needs. Feminists claim that these ideas feed into the sexist ideology that men and women are inherently different from one another. This opens the doors for misogyny and other forms of discrimination and unequal treatment. Thus, as our conversation on evolutionary psychology continues, we must keep in mind the possible negative implications this rhetoric can have, such as propelling problematic stereotypes and discrediting the experiences and legitimacy of transgender individuals. However, in evolutionary psychology's defense, individuals make these decisions subconsciously. The individuals that make these decisions that lead to healthier offspring pass on their instincts to future generations. Competition occurs in all species. However, with rationality and reason, humans can, for the most part, avoid barbaric and brutal fighting. Robin Dunbar of the University of Oxford writes that increased competition in larger groups could be driven by a higher number of social contracts, competition for mates and cooperative partners, or decreased familiarity with people leading to a need to establish dominance relationship. Many popular films and shows portray a masculine man who is willing to fight for his significant other such as the knife fight scene in Rebel Without a Cause. The man is willing to flaunt his brute strength to prove his capabilities over his rival competition. However, toxic masculinity, as portrayed in these scenes, is so exhaustively outdated and overused in these stereotypes. Additionally, kin selection is a theory in evolutionary psychology that states that people will make sacrifices for close family members rather than distant relatives or random people. One of the best series of shots and a pivotal scene of Bong Joon-ho's The Host perfectly embodies kin selection. As a large destructive creature torments South Korea, he Bong tells his children to escape while he tries to kill the creature. As he pulls the trigger, he realizes his life is over trying to save his children's. He Bong sacrifices his life so that his children can survive, reproduce, and spread their shared genes. Another subject of evolutionary psychology is the battle for masculinity. Despite his disability, Jake from Avatar feels strong, powerful, and manly when he enters the world of Pandora and regains the use of his legs, a confidence he lacks in his reality. While evolutionary psychology claims that women desire strong men, men desire to be strong and attractive to females. Thus, after Jake is able to regain his masculinity in the eyes of evolutionary psychology, he gains the girl, Natiri. A lot of evolutionary psychology perpetuates rigid gender roles that are based solely off of reproduction. The man must be strong and masculine, while the female must be young and beautiful. These stereotypes are constantly exploited in film. However, many films do break this evolutionary mold. Jealousy has been a factor in human relationships for far longer than film has existed. David Buss, professor of evolutionary psychology at the University of Texas, states, because both men and women over human evolutionary history have been damaged by relationship loss, both sexes have faced adaptive problems to which jealousy may have evolved as a solution. While both sexes experience jealousy 
in sexual relationships, their evolutionary functions are slightly different. Men's sexual jealousy serves the function of increasing the certainty of parenthood and passing on genes. Male sexual jealousy occurs in all known cultures and is the leading cause of spousal homicide across cultures, not suggesting dedicated mechanisms for spousal homicide, but rather male mechanisms designed to increase paternity certainty. Unlike men, women can be 100% certain of the maternity of the child, so women become jealous at cues of the loss of any commitment, which would ultimately lead to a loss of resources for her and any potential children. Elizabeth Lloyd, professor of philosophy of science and Marcus Feldman, professor of biological sciences, wrote a paper discussing inclusive fitness theory. If you are an evolutionist trying to describe genetic relationships between individuals that are more distantly related than first-degree relatives, immediate family, the process of genotypic selection makes the computation mathematically intractable. The solution is to assume a very particular form of extremely weak selection. The resulting reduction in dimensionality not only allows calculations to be made in terms of possibilities of grandparent and cousin similarities, but it produces an average fitness in the population. Because other members of a population might share one's genes, a gene can also increase its evolutionary success by indirectly promoting reproduction and survival of others who also carry that gene. In She's All That, Zach wants to change Lainey to adapt social behavior similar to his own before he finds her attractive. Additionally, in Always Be My Maybe, the two are attracted to one another because they shared similar childhoods, experiences, and physical traits. Michael Stasio, researcher on perfectionism and psychological adjustment, says that parental investment can be defined as any behavior that increases the likelihood that an individual offspring will survive and thus reproduce. Parental investment is necessarily higher for women than for men, since women's parental investment involves gestation and lactation at the very least. As the more investing sex, women are necessarily more selective in choosing a mate. In their essay entitled Evolutionary Models of In-Group Favoritism, Naoki Masuda and Fang Fu define in-group favoritism as the tendency for individuals to cooperate with in-group members more strongly than with out-group members. Psychologists suggest that there is unforced altruism in between members of a particular group, and they may be more likely to select each other than members outside of the group. These in-groups can be characterized by a plethora of factors, such as age, ethnicity, religion, race, particular jobs, and so on. In Yorgos Lanthimos' 2015 film The Lobster, people are forced to find a lifetime partner within 45 days or transform into an animal of their choosing. With the deadline approaching and the pressure to find a partner increasing, one man pretends to get a nosebleed to have an in with a woman who suffers the same affliction. I think your nose is bleeding. Really? Oh, no. This happens to me all the time. It's really, really annoying. I know. I have a nosebleed problem too. His thinking behind this decision is that if he can find a similarity between himself and the woman, then the two may pair up together and avoid an eternity of loneliness. The film satirizes the constructs of relationships in today's society. Just as people with nosebleeds are a niche in-group of their own, couples are another. Society forces individuals to find partners, and if they do not, they are rejected by those who do. While in-groups can prove beneficial for their members, they can also be alienating for those who do not fit into said groups. Evolutionary psychology, in some aspect or another, is present in all films. While many films use findings on human behaviors to relate film characters to their audiences, some films highlight human nature in order to critique it. While film is an outlet to exhibit the very knowledge and awareness that makes us human, evolutionary psychology reminds us of the omnipresence of our humble, primitive nature that is still at the core of our existence.